So what analogies have you heard about sexual purity specifically with girls? So um, I remember the first like official purity talk that I ever had was in middle school and it was with one of my um, female science teachers. I remember she described it like a piece of tape and saying how if you stick a piece of tape to something it might stick really well the first time but then if you take it off and keep trying to stick it on other things eventually it won't stick. You have a lollipop and then you unwrap it and you lick the lollipop, right? And like that's great but then like other people start like licking the lollipop or like you keep licking the lollipop and then it's like hand it off to someone else and it's like all right do you want this and it's like no it's gross and everyone's licked it. I was at a girls conference um, for, for church in junior high and the speaker held out this like pretty little present and said that that was who we are and that was who we are in the minds of Christ and she dropped on the ground and stomped on it and I kept thinking that she would break out a new box but she never did. He had a bouquet of roses that he handed out to everyone at the very beginning of his talk. And he said, you guys, look at the roses and just pass them around. So he began to talk about um, just sex and just in the biblical context. But at the very end, he had everybody hold up the roses. And he had kept one rose in his hand that he held onto during the entire speech and he compared the two. One, you know, you like rub petals when you see a flower, the stems were broken, and some of the kids had picked off the petals, some of them didn't have petals at all. And he held up the two and he said, who wants this rose? You know, and I, my heart broke when I heard that. He told me that uh, girls that have sex outside of marriage shouldn't be allowed to, um, to say that they're pure. And that obviously pissed me off to no end because I had lived that and felt that and it was completely not the God that I know. My worth was wrapped around being sexually pure. So if I wasn't sexually pure, then I wasn't worthy or I wasn't worthwhile or I didn't have worth. The church, I think, puts too much of an emphasis on this like need to like control women's bodies and cover them up um, to avoid sin when like the actual problem is like the way people think and the way people are looking at women's bodies and trying to use them and um, consume them. It really built into a lot of shame and um, actually even a, a coming to terms with my faith and not being sure if I believed it anymore because it felt like it was just something that was told to uh, to control me rather than something that people understood, which is cliche, but where was that? There's this whole modesty culture, and women are told that we can't wear a certain thing or we can't act a certain way, and anything that we do could stumble our brothers, and that's not something we should do. It's implicitly said that if we do something that is in any way immodest, it's our fault for what happens, and it's not their fault for their actions, because we should have just been saving them. And so there's this fear put into them where instead of wearing like a modest swimsuit to reveal your dignity, it's to hide your insecurities. I have to check my heart too. Think of what's the point of shaming girls. Who's benefiting from making an environment where women are put at the blame? So you're gonna destroy the rose, but instead it represents hmm. the stigma of, I get that. Okay. of what purity is. So you can destroy it however which way you want. <laughs> We're like a beautiful flower because it's all about what society